my little Margie. I've been both mother and father to her since she was born. She's grown up now, and you think my job's all done, eh? <laughs> well, that's what you think. When she was little, I could spank her and make her mind me. I had control over her. I made her eat her spinach, no candy before meals. And when she disobeyed, I took her roller skates away for a week. But what can you do when a girl reaches this age? She's completely out of hand. I've got a problem, believe me. I've got a problem. That's my father. I've raised him from childhood. That is, my childhood. He's nearly 50 now, and you'd think he'd settle down, wouldn't you? Well, that's what you think. Today, he looks better in shorts on a tennis court than fellas 25. Girls wink at him, and what's worse, he winks back at them. I want a nice, old, comfortable father. I try to look after him, but he just won't settle down. I've got a problem, believe me, I've got a problem. Well, fine, all right, fine. Glad things are working out. Hey, you always did get along with those people in Boston. I'll be back as soon as I wrap up the contract, or maybe a day or two. Uh, by the way, did uh, Harvey Lane get in? Yeah, he's with me right now. As soon as you get back, we'll sign him up as another happy client. He won't be nearly as happy as we'll be with that cold million account. <laughs> yes, it is cold, all right. It's the kind of cold I enjoy, if you know what I mean. All right, boy. See you when you get back. All right, our executive vice president. He'll handle your account personally. I'm anxious to meet him. Well, what do you want? Uh, I mean, uh, did you want something? Mr. Lane, this is my business partner, Mr. Todd. Very nice to meet you. Thank you, Mr. Lane. Uh, would you mind waiting just a moment while I have a word with Mr. Honeywell? Oh, of course not. <laughs> All right, Todd, what is it? When Mr. Albright left for Boston, I heard him mention that the apartment above his was vacant. What about it? Well, I thought it might be nice to have Mr. Lane close to home, so to speak, until Albright closes the deal. Todd, my lad, I've got to give credit where credit is due. Thank you, George. Yes, sir. Every couple of years, you come through with a good idea. <laughs> Mr. Lane, I just thought of a great idea. Instead of staying in a stuffy hotel, how would you like a nice, big, modern apartment? Say, that sounds good. I like to keep in shape, work out with my barbells and things. An apartment's just what you need, space to move around in. Just another part of Todd and Honeywell's service. Nothing's too good for a client of Honeywell and Todd. That's what I always say. <laughs>
believe me, lady, I'm sorry. I, I promise not to exercise any more tonight. I was tired, but now I'm wide awake. All right, but let's be reasonable from now on. Goodbye. you put your disposition up in curlers. Maybe it'll be better in the morning. We never had any trouble with the other people who lived up there. No, they weren't deaf. <laughs> Is that so? Well, I have as much right to make noise as you. The trouble with you is that you probably never lived this close to human beings before. Well, what was that all about? Dad, I didn't expect you back for a couple more days. I closed the deal this afternoon. Who are you talking to? I mean, uh, yelling at. We have a new neighbor. He's been making so much racket I couldn't read. Just now he was making some kind of a squeaking noise. You know what I told him? Go oil your kneecaps. That's what I did. <laughs> Honey, calm yourself. That squeaking sound has been with us for a long time. What are you talking about? You remember Mr. and Mrs. Zebert. Well, sure I remember them. They just moved out a couple of days ago. Uh-huh. And that rocker used to squeak all the time. I never heard it before tonight. You just never noticed it before tonight. Apparently, that new party has gotten you so riled up that now you're sitting around just listening for something to complain about. Okay. It's all my fault. He's in the right and I'm in the wrong. Honey, wait a minute. Be reasonable. Darling, this is a big world and there are millions of people on this earth. We've got to learn to get along with people. There's room enough here for all of us. Why don't you go upstairs and tell that to that Martian? Oh, Margie, please. It's a lecture over, Dad. May I go to bed and try to sleep now? Yes, you may go to bed. And from now on, don't let me catch you stirring up any more trouble with the neighbors. Good night, Mr. Albright. <laughs> So the gentleman upstairs is making a little bit too much noise for this time of night. But I'm not going to have it in your way. I'm going to handle it in the way that sensible people should handle it. <laughs> now I'll show you what a little intelligence can do. progress. <laughs> What's the complaint this time? Am I using all the hot water? <laughs> I always sing when I take a shower. Oh, I'm not criticizing your singing, sir. It's just that it doesn't go particularly well at this hour. <laughs> oh, 
I assure you, sir, we wouldn't even like Bing Crosby at this time of night. I've come across people like you before. You're a couple of cranks. Okay, fellow, I've tried to be nice, but now I'm telling you, cut the nuisance or there's going to be trouble. But, Dad, you've just been sitting around listening for something to complain about. <laughs> Get along with okay, honey, I was wrong. What are we going to do? We'll give him some of his own medicine. We'll wait until the noise stops, and then we'll know he's in bed. And then what? Then we'll wait a half hour until we're sure he's asleep. And... Dad, what's on your mind? Honey, this is war. <laughs> Dad? This, my darling daughter, is the Albright Avenger. <laughs> he ought to be well off into a happy dreamland by now. person in the world to resort to this sort of violence, but that bird up there asked for it. Then he laughed a few times. Swell. That must be him. Hello? Are we going to keep this up all night? Apologize? Go soak your head! <laughs> apologize for starting it, but I think he's about whipped. <laughs> Who knows, someday we may all look back on this and laugh. We may even get to know him. <laughs> Operation is done, Neil completed. Over and out. Oh, well, good night, baby. <laughs> good night, Dad. Peace around here. something for me this morning. Okay, Dad. I want you to take these papers down to the office and give them to Mr. Honeywell. I'm going to hop a train for Philly. All right. Just wait till tonight. I'm going to show that zombie upstairs something. What are we going to do? I've got an idea for him that'll blast him right through the roof. Dad, don't you think we ought to maybe give it up? Who's the setting influence in this family? Well, you are usually, but Dad... Tonight we blast him through the roof. <laughs> I hope I get rid of this before I meet my new client, Lane. Oh, yes, Harvey Lane. I heard you talking to Mr. Honeywell about him. Yeah, I'd have to make up some excuses to where I got it. But after we take care of that guy upstairs, I'll be able to do business with Mr. Lane without any interference. Goodbye, baby. Goodbye, Dad. Good morning, Miss Albright. Hi, Betty. Dad sent these to Mr. Honeywell. Thank you. I'll give them to him tomorrow. I'm not expecting him in today. These are for Mr. Honeywell or Mr. Albright. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Lane, do you know Mr. Albright's daughter? Oh, Mr. Lane. Dad's looking forward to meeting you. Well, I bet. <laughs> Happy to meet you, Miss Albright. You'll have to excuse my yawning, but I had a tough time last night. Same here. I hardly slept a wink. <laughs> Bye, Betty. Nice meeting you, Mr. Lane. Wait, Miss Albright. Have you had lunch? I just had breakfast. Oh, frankly, so did I. Could you come up with a quick suggestion? Suggestion? What kind of a suggestion? Oh, a suggestion as to uh, 
how a fellow can find an excuse to get to go out with a girl when breakfast is over and it's too early for lunch. <laughs> well, now, let me think. Have you been to the aquarium? Yes. It is dull, isn't it? Yes, it is. <laughs> I know. What? Let's go dancing. Dancing? Haven't you ever been dancing at 9.30 in the morning before? <laughs> well, neither have I, but I've always wanted to dance with you ever since I met you 30 seconds ago. <laughs> How do you like that? How do I like what? Well, the fellow's supposed to see the girl home. This is a switch. I don't get it. We got out here by mistake. This is where I live. You live here? Well, this is where I live, too. You live here? Well, we're neighbors. Oh, this is going to be great. What a wonderful coincidence. Wait a minute. Did you forget something? No, I was just figuring. The elevator there in that apartment. My apartment's in the same position on the next floor. <laughs> Right above that apartment? Yes. Do you by any chance know the two creeps who live in there? Uh, yes, I know them quite well. Who are they? The Andersons. Andersons, huh? Do they ever give you any trouble? You know, like making lots of noise and complaining every time you drop a feather? Oh, indeed they do. They're terrible people. But let's not talk about them. <laughs> if I never meet the Andersons, I'll be very happy. Which apartment is yours? Mine? Um... I know it as well as I know my own name. <laughs> we passed it. <laughs> oh, Margie, how are you, dear? Hi, Grandma. <laughs> this is Harvey Lane, your son's new client. Son? <laughs> Granny's so absent-minded. You remember your son? My father? Oh, that son. Oh, my boy. How do you do, Mrs. Albright? <laughs> I'm certainly happy to find that all the tenants around here aren't like those Andersons across the hall. Andersons? <laughs> More of her absent-mindedness. You know, Granny, the Andersons across the hall. Right across the hall in 10A. Oh, yes, those Andersons. <laughs> Lovely people. <laughs> Granny, what's wrong with you this evening? How can you call those terrible people lovely? They're awful. You know that. Oh, yes. One in particular always giving me trouble. <laughs> if you think they give you trouble, you should live above them. I know. I'd like to have you come up to my place and see for yourself. Maybe we could get up a petition and get them out of here. Come up to your place? Yes. I'd like to see if you think I'm being unreasonable. Let's go, Granny. <laughs> you know, last night old man Anderson came up and started a fight with me. I bet the woman is just as bad. Believe you me, she's worse than the old man. <laughs> it's only one flight up. Would you mind walking? Oh, not at all. Charlie, I'll need a little help. Would you mind? I'd be glad to, Mr. Albright. It all started like this. I was exercising with my barbell. Now, notice how gently I put it down. Is that anything to start a fight about? Look like a big record player. And that's what it is, and this is a public address speaker. <laughs> and, uh, and these are sound effect records like they use on radio shows. And then they started pounding on their ceiling. Let me go down and talk to them. If I talk to them, maybe I can reason with them. No, it won't do any good, Margie. They're impossible, especially that woman. Charlie, you play these records, mix them up, and I'll do the rest. Yes.
Oh, believe me, I made up my mind. I won't give them the slightest excuse to complain. I'll even walk around in my stocking feet if necessary. Okay, Charlie, turn it on. You've said you think a lot of me, and I'm going to ask you to do me a great favor. Don't go down there. Let me talk to Mr. Anderson. You'll see, I know I can reason with him. I'll do it, Margie, but only as a favor to you. Oh, thanks, Harvey, thanks. I promise you, you'll never have another minute's trouble. What'll I do with it? What are you doing with it? I don't care. Just get rid of it from the look on Margie's face. There's trouble on the way. <laughs> What were you doing upstairs? Dad, that fellow, the one upstairs, he's, he's Harvey Lane. Harvey Lane? Harvey Lane is quiet for the same thing. Oh, no. Oh, no, no. What do we do? Oh, Mr. Honeywell. Mr. Lane, I want you to come down to the next floor with me. I'd like to have you meet Mr. Albright. He lives here, you know. Yes, I know. Uh, you do? Yes, I met his daughter today. She's a lovely girl, but I haven't met her father yet. Oh. Take the stairs. All right. If Harvey Lane finds out who you are, you'll lose his account and I'll lose him. I'll, I'll leave town. I'll leave town, Margie. I really will. I'll, I'll go away until Mr. Honeywell makes the deal. Oh, oh Mr. Honeywell. That's the Andersons' apartment. And believe me, I don't want to meet them. Anderson? <laughs> Why, Mr. Lane, Vern Albright and his daughter Margie have lived in this apartment for six years. Good <laughs> evening, Mrs. Odets. Odets? Yeah. The name is Albright. <laughs> her name is Albright. Mr. Honeywell, that old lady. Is her name Odette's? Always has been. I can't see why she calls herself Albright. That's because you've never met the Andersons. Yes. Ring the bell, Mr. Honeywell. <laughs> now, Mr. Anderson, we're going to have it out. Anderson? Please, Mr. Lane, give me a chance. I can explain everything, please. I'm going to beat you to a pulp. Yeah, Mr. Lane, this is a very unconventional way for a client to meet one of my staff. <laughs> Hi, Margie. You won't have to talk to him anymore. I'm going to chat with him in a language he'll understand. Business or no business, I won't permit this. Let him do it, Mr. Honeywell. Let him beat me up. After all, I'm only Mr. Anderson, and I, and I have been a problem. <laughs> Who the hell is Mr. Anderson everybody's talking about? That's me, and, and don't ask any questions. Oh, no, Harvey, don't! Stand back, Margie. I might reconsider Mr. Anderson, but only under one condition. Well, well, well what is it? Any, anything at all? I'll call everything off, Mr. Anderson, if you'll approve of my dating your daughter, Miss Albright, who lives across the hallway with your mother, Mrs. Odette. <laughs> you see, Mr. Honeywell, it turned out all right. It turned out wonderfully. <laughs> <laughs> Will somebody please tell me something? Who the Sam Hill is Anderson? <laughs> 